using Excel. Now, if we're using Excel, we have a number of things that we can do to use Excel. Firstly, suppose we look at this problem where we've gone into a, the store, we've gone into 10 stores, and we've calculated the weekly sales, and we've taken the weekly sales. The figures there are given um, in hundreds of dollars. In this, term, in this case, we're asked to find evidence or to look for evidence if, to see if the average bear sales is more is more than 500. We're looking to see if it's higher than 500 here. Notice more than 500. So here, our mean value bigger than 500 because we've got five and it's in hundreds. Or we could say the mean is bigger than five if we're using the numbers there. The mean is bigger than five, which means the alternate complement of that statement, mean is less than or equal to five, means that we will then determine our alternate hypothesis this time because of that word more than five. Our alternate hypothesis will be the mean is greater than five, and the alternate hypothesis will be the mean is equal to five. So we'll come back to that one. What I want to do now is to show you how this works in Excel because Excel doesn't have a test for one mean. But we can use Excel's function in data analysis, and I'll go through this, and I'll briefly go into Excel to show that we can use the data analysis in Excel. And you've used that before in the first part of the course. Use data analysis from the data menu. And we use an unequal variances test to check our answers. Now, we can use Excel to get the mean and the sample mean and standard deviation. And we can do this test by the usual means. But we can also do it by using the Excel function and getting Excel to do the whole thing for us. So you'll notice here we have column A, which contains the data from the, sh the stores, and column B, which contains the hypothesized mean value. And this is using the hypothesized mean value in as many cells, same sample size, as the sample size that we have. So we have the hypothesized mean value written in there for those same 10 uh, sample size. Now notice here that if we have a sample where every item is equal to 5, then there is zero variability there. The variance is zero. So clearly, we can say the variance of, of those two samples is not equal, which means that we can, we can use Excel to do this because the variance of the first column, our sample size, um, our actual sample, is clearly not zero. And in fact, the dialog at the bottom, the output at the bottom, will give you the variance for that sample, this value here. So, what we're now going to do is try to go into Excel. And here we have the bear sales. So when we are looking at the bear sales here, the data, the information we have is that the sample mean is 6.4. And what we're looking at here to do with the data is to put the hypothesized mean in here, which is 5. And I'll increase the sample. Um, the information here. I'll make these fonts bigger so we can see them. And I'm going to put that in as many times as there are items on the sample that we have. So I've got a sample with a hypothesized mean value of 5. Now I'm going to go into the data menu here and use the data analysis. And you'll notice if you look at data analysis, there are a whole string of things that you can do. And right down at the bottom, we have some t-tests. We'll be looking at these over the next few weeks. The one I'm suggesting we use here is the two-sample t-test, because we now have two samples, and their variances are clearly not the same. So we choose two-sample t-test, unequal variances, and click OK. Now, this gives us the opportunity to choose our first variable, and I'm choosing the first column there. And then the second variable, so this is the second sample, and I'm choosing the second column 
there. So now in my dialog box, I can see that I'm using the values from those cells, and it takes in all of those particular values. Now in this question, we're looking at an alpha value of 0.05. That's the default value in Excel. If we wanted a different alpha value, we would have to change the value there. And also, so that we can see the information on the screen in front of us, I'm going to put the output here right at the top of the screen. And so now you can see that the output will come on the screen with the top left-hand corner in cell D2. Now check everything else on there, looks all right. Hypothesize mean difference. Now this is important because we're using an Excel test to determine if the hypothesized mean difference is zero. And this is with using the two sample tests. We'll be seeing this more often. This says, can we suggest those, equal, those are equal, um, if those two means are equal, and we need to put a hypothesized mean difference in there. Now we can click OK, and Excel will give us the information that we want. And it's up on the screen there. So you can see the information that's given in Excel, and we'll be coming back to look at this in the next week's uh, head here. What we're getting in Excel from this is the mean value for the sample. We also have the sample variance from which we can find the sample standard deviation. And we have the test statistic. So this is the test statistic that Excel is calculating for us, which means that if we have the original data in a problem, we don't need to do that test statistic calculation for ourselves. Notice as well as the test statistic that Excel will give us critical T values. I want to just point these out. But Excel will give us both the two-tail and the one-tail critical T values. We have to decide within a problem which of those we're going to use. Now in our problem here, we have a situation where the information tells us that it's a one-tail test. So we can use our one-tail critical value of 1.833. This is the value that we'll be using, one-tail T value. And also, just while we're looking at that output, just so that you'll see ahead for next week, Excel also gives a whole pile more information, including some probabilities or p-values that we'll be coming to, to look at over the next few weeks. So Excel will give a whole lot of information. And often the other software packages will give this kind of stuff too. We are the ones who have to determine which things are important and interpret that, those values from there. So now we have the information. We have our test statistic. And we have the critical value. And we can then go on to work out um, the decision in our test. So the test statistic, 1.3125, and the critical value, t equals 1.833. In fact, even without that template and the pictures, you might be able to see whether you would reject or not reject again here. So going back to our Excel. Our Excel output here, going back to the, the slide, had the information that I've just shown you in Excel down on the, right hand, on the left hand side, and the dialog box increased in size on the right hand side. Now, the information that we can take from there to complete our test template. Now, again, remember that our null and alternate hypotheses here that we've gone through in the previous slide, the mean is bigger than 5 was the alternate hypothesis. The mean is equal to 5 was the null. Here, our alpha value was 0 0.05. And the degrees of freedom, 10 minus 1, 9 degrees of freedom. But notice that because we used Excel, we didn't have to worry about that. Excel took care of the degrees of freedom within the problem. Our situation with this example is that our rejection region now is on the right-hand side. And as we saw in Excel, the critical T value with alpha equals 0.05 on the right-hand side 
that critical T value was 1.833. And our test statistic, which we're seeing from Excel, so we don't have to work it out, from Excel, that test statistic was 1.3125. This means our test statistic, remember this T distribution has zero in the middle here, the test statistic is somewhere between naught and the critical value, 1.3125. It's in the do not reject region. So we do not have evidence here to suggest that the mean sales is bigger than five. And we can write that in the context of the problem, insufficient evidence that the mean is equal to five, and use those words and fill that bit in for yourself. 